I once heard someone describe sudo as asking nicely for the system to execute a command. I've done this myself, but honestly, I think it's more like you have the boss's permission to do this. Sudo allows us to run in the regular user account, but also run commands as the root user when necessary. When you create a, a new account, a new user account um, on install with many Linux distributions, it will add your user to the sudo group and allow you to execute all commands as the root user. After install, you can always add users to the sudo group, but that brings up the question, what if I only want a user to execute certain commands as root? Well, this is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to specify which command a user can run as sudo. Stick with me. I've got a favorite ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, give it a dislike if you didn't like it, make sure you let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comment section below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end of the video so you get the most out of it. Let's do this thing. All right, so let me go ahead and shrink my face here. All right, so a Linux system will have a sudo user group called either sudo or wheel, excuse me. By default, any user added to these groups will be able to execute all commands as root. Uh, if it's just you on the system, that may not be a bad thing, but if you're a business or enterprise, um, this could create a lot of problem, especially around security and access controls and things like that. Let me actually show you the actual folder here. Actually, I'm just gonna, let's go to, let's go to, let's do a cat, Etsy, servers. And we gotta make sure we put a sudo on there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and cat the Etsy sudoers file because the Etsy sudoers file, that's actually going to be the configuration file for sudo governing what users and groups can do with sudo. All right, perfect. And we can see here, we've got a bunch of information in here. We're not gonna go into the details of this file or other things outside of setting these for a user. Uh, if that is something that you want covered in the future, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. But let's go ahead and keep going through this. And we can see here, we, you know, we've got a bunch of different stuff, lots of comments, which is indicated by these hash marks here. Now we can see root we've got here, we've got admin group and we've got the sudo group. So this is that sudo group that I was mentioning, you know, if it's, if it's, um, if it's you know, another distribution where they have wheel, it's gonna be called wheel. So uh, just keep that in mind. I'm going to say this now, do not edit this file directly. It is easy to lock yourself out of the system and create all sorts of havoc. So please do not edit this file directly. There's actually a command to be able to go ahead and do this. Let's clear this out. And that's gonna be the we're going to actually need to run it as sudo by sudo command. All right, there we go. And that's actually going to allow us to edit it. Now you can see that it actually opened up the document inside of a uh, inside of nano, the text editor. And one of the things you notice at the top, it says Etsy sudoers dot temp. Using this command is going to allow us to edit the sudoers file without screwing anything up. It's going to, it's basically making a temporary copy that, and then it's going to run checks prior to completing the update. Now, one of the things though, before we actually start getting into making any updates to this file is that you're going to want to make sure that you use all caps for the syntax when you're adding stuff for users, which we'll get into here in just a minute, with the exception of the username, any of this other stuff, this is all going to be in caps. So please make sure that you're using all caps because if not, it will not go correctly. So I'm gonna actually exit out of here. Do all right, control X. Now let's go actually go over here and talk about the um, an actual um, um, input for the sudoers file. Now, the actual syntax for it's going to be you're going to have the username here first, and then you're going to put host to be applied to. Uh, in this particular case, we're only running a single host. So you can put all or you can just put the name of the host I'm just putting all for simplicity purposes. Now the you're going to put an equal sign, and then the next thing you'll put is which users can user run commands as you can specify all or you can specify, you know, a, a range of users, you know, and anytime that you're using more than one user, you're going to go ahead and separate those with a comma and don't use any spaces after the comma. And then after that, you're gonna put a colon and then you're gonna put which groups the user can run commands as. And the same rule applies there is so you're gonna list more than one group, you can go ahead and separate those with a comma. Then after that, you're gonna go ahead and close the parentheses. And if I didn't specify at the beginning, you're gonna put that, you know, before you specify which user they can run command, it's gonna be in, it's gonna open up the parentheses. And then outside of that, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and put a space and then you can put which commands these uh, rules, um, which commands these uh, rules apply to. So, and we can see an example here. We've got user one, we've got all, and we've got um, here, which basically means all hosts. 
And then we've got equals and then all. And the first one is going to mean they can run commands as all users. And we can also see here that we've got uh, all for groups on this other side. And then on the other, on this, on the end here, we've only got one single command listed, which is going to be user bin reboot. And you're probably like, well, what's, what's user bin reboot? That's actually the full path to the actual command itself. So let me actually show you how you're able to go ahead and get that because this command right here is going to be the one that we're going to be using for the example in this video today. So let's go back and go back. Whoops, went a little too far there. Bear with me. So the command that you're going to use is which, and then you would just do reboot. And we can see there it's user sbin reboot. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually go over here because I don't really feel like typing this all in there. And we've actually already got a, another user here, tail Etsy pass WD. We can see there we've got user one who is right there. All right, now let's clear this out. Now let's go ahead and run the sudo by sudo command again. And now what we want to do is we want to try to keep things organized because you could really put stuff in here anywhere, but you also want to make sure that you're kind of following, you know, the, the best practice norms. And you can see that here, we actually have a section for inputting user information. There's also one for members of the admin group as well as for the pseudo group and all that good stuff. Where we wanna be is right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually go ahead and I'm gonna paste this in here just cause I don't feel like typing it out. Now, here we go. This is actually the exact same one that we just saw. And right here, we have a good example of the root user. The root user can run can run on all host, all command, all all users, all groups, and run all commands. And we can see that down here with sudo group as well. That's that's the same case. That's why I specified earlier that you like when you set when you add a user to the sudo group, it's going to allow them to run all commands by default, unless you unless you've actually gone in there and manually um, limited it. And you know there may also be distributions out there that may limit this by default. Uh, this is just an Ubuntu server, so that's what I'm going based off of. And Typically, when I've done this, actually every time that I've done this with you know Ubuntu server or Red Hat server, it's always been the same case. You know, the only difference is, is that sudo here and wheel group over there. So uh, that's the only difference. So yeah, so what we got to do here is what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, put our syntax in there. And in this particular case, we're just going to specify that user one uh, can uh, do these on all hosts, can run as all users, and can run as all groups. And the only command though they can run is user sbin reboot. So let's go ahead and just run a control X and we're gonna say yes to that. And then we're gonna go ahead and say, yep. And then we notice we didn't get any errors. Now, if say if you had done some kind of mistake, you would see an error here, but we didn't get any so that we know that everything here is correct. Now, I will warn you, if you're using, if you're filling out the syntax, any of this right here, if you use lowercase, it may not throw an error, but it may not work as well. So just keep that in mind. You're, for these right here, you're gonna want to use all uppercase. This right here, you're gonna be is gonna be the exact same username, and this one's gonna be the exact path to um, to the command. And you know these are all gonna be in lowercase. Because remember, Linux is a case sensitive operating system. So just keep that in mind. All right, cool. So now what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna go ahead and exit, and then we're gonna do. Uh, SSH, actually, no, let's just do this. I don't know, type it all out. And then we're gonna do um, a user one. And let's go ahead and put in their password. Give it just a second here. All right, cool. Let's clear this out. All right, so there we go. Now, let's go ahead and try to do, let's run sudo power off. All right, it's asking us for the password. Oh, what do we have here? All right, so what we have here is it says, sorry, user, uh, user, user one is not allowed to execute user sbin power op it, as root on Ubuntu server. So we get this error because we don't have sudo permissions. Now, I also wanna show you another thing here that can be super helpful when, like, when you're looking for um, information on sudo, running sudo uh, tag L, which I think stands for list, but don't call me on that, but it does the list thing. And it's gonna tell you what you can run as root. And we can see here, we've got that right here. So now let's go ahead and run a sudo reboot. And there we go, we actually lost the connection. This is a virtual machine running on a um, running on my Windows laptop that's sitting on the couch over there. So, um, you know, it's going to take a minute to reboot and everything like that. But we can see that that it's really, really easy. You know, and one of the things that I want to show you, though, and I've done, a, I think I've done a video, on, I believe I've done a video on this um, in the past, if I, if I haven't, let me know if you want to see that video in the, in the, in the comments down below. Sometimes I forget if I've done a video or not, because I've done quite a bit this year is you can use, you can do which, 
And then you could do, like, let's just say power off. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I forgot that I'm here on my uh, connection refused. Connection refused. All right, there we go. All right, and here we go. We're back into the command. Now, we want to run which, and then you can just do power off, and it'll give you the full path to the command, which is awesome, right? Yeah, that's how you'll be able to go ahead and do that. If, if you're not sure, but you're really, I really can't emphasize it enough is you're really going to want to make sure that you put in the full path. And I, I didn't really emphasize that up to this point, but you really want to put in the full path if you're specifying an individual command, because if, you know, for any reason something gets done with, you know, environment variables or anything like that could throw things off or path stuff. Um, not going to get into that here, but it, it could throw things off. And then next thing you know, you know, you know, you're, you're not able to, you know, one day you're able to do it one day you're not, um, or maybe not at all, you know, or you set up the new, you set up the new newbie, you're going on a vacation for two weeks, the newbie comes in on day one and is like, uh, I can't do anything. And then your business goes to hell while you're out on vacation for the two weeks. So save yourself all of that trouble. All right, so that's how you do it. This stuff is not as intimidating as it seems. If you like this video, check out this other video from my channel. Remember, mistakes make you better, so keep making them and learn from them. Thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.